Thank you all for attending again and coming back. Uh, definitely think some of y'all may be required to do this. Just some of y'all have are muted with no hand raise feature. I don't know. I love technology, but not as much as you. Uh, did not. Okay. Uh, am I the host? Let me see here. Escape. Let me go back and see if I can. Twig, you raised your hand. Let me see if I can. Yeah. Okay, you can do it. Hello. Hello. Yep. Race well on here. Okay. You're good. I'm trying to let it go back to me, but it's not letting me go back. Let's stop share. In just a second, I can go through. Let me click here. Yes. I'm trying to go through here. So Twig, I guess you don't have the ability to um, uh, you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, it was saying that the host had turned off um, mute abilities for everyone. I don't know if it was just me or everyone on there. Okay. So uh, just to let everybody know, we're, we're having issues on my website when I see your questions posted. Um, it's, it's locking up quite a bit. So just to give you guys a heads up, I'm trying to get to those. We've had trouble with the, the link not necessarily working, but he is posting those. And I do know that if um, Mr. Paisley is always available through email. So if you get his email, you've got any other questions, definitely send him an email and he'll drop the link to you. Give me a loud to talk thing, but what's going down through here? Just take me a second and then we're going to get started. Girl should be in an unmute part. I like this a lot better. I definitely want to hear from you and I definitely know you don't want to hear me talking the entire time. So feedback's great. Hello. Hello. I think some people are through here. May take a little bit, but we're going to get started. One thing is, you, um, if y'all can, if you click on those links, I put it things. There's a one out there that has lesson plans on it. I have the criminal justice lesson plans for CJ one and two. Probably should have added three in there too, just in case some of y'all want to discuss that, or four if you haven't teach that. But if you uh, can go through those and look at those and just provide any rigorous activities or questioning y'all do during those. Uh, for those standards, uh, so others can see those, uh, especially newer teachers, you know, if it's a challenge on different things they're doing, or things y'all share. Just go through and just, uh, you can type it out anywhere. It's uh, some of y'all. Can imagine doing a classroom where students couldn't respond. And we are having a few people that are saying that they can't see the link and uh, some people don't even have a mic on theirs, so they're not even showing the mute button down at the bottom. Okay. Well, if they don't have a mic, we can't hear them. So it's kind of a moot point, I guess. Um, sorry. All, we, all we can see is your face, Ray. All right. You see, all right, I'm going to go and pull this up and see if I can share the screen. There we go. It's recording. We're going to share screen. Let's go here and let's share. All right. We're going to continue with this and we're going to make it work as best we can. Uh, we're going to fly by the seat of our pants, but that's okay. Uh, I'm hopefully not afraid of heights. So we're talking about building rigorous lessons. So, um, uh, I'm sure all you have great and challenging lessons you give to your students. I mean, that's obvious. You've been doing this for years. 
you know that. But I think one thing we want to try and do here is we want to build on each other. See if we can, you know, there's maybe an idea that you do that works well in your classrooms, provide for other people. Uh, if you can click on the link, it's in the chat. I put them out there. Uh, click on those. The reason I want to make it a live document, that's why I'm not going to put it as a PDF because then all you do is download and it doesn't really benefit. You can type, you can give yourself that information and so you're just typing out information through yourself you already have. So these are live links. I want people to be able to look on and see and the different types of information or lessons they do under each standard uh, that can really benefit or you think would benefit other teachers. Uh, you will have access to this link. I'm not going to delete it. It will be out there uh, from now on. It's just on my drive account. Uh, if you lose it, uh, there's actually, uh, you can, a uh, tiny URLs I've already created for it. And we'll go over those in a minute uh, to talk about that. But we want to talk about, you know, how are we going to build, you know, more rigorous lessons? How are we going to continue to challenge it? You know, and uh, I guess if you were in the earlier sessions, we may be getting new standards, but some of those standards are very similar. Your lessons probably going to change that much. Even if you have new standards, I don't think you're going to alter them greatly. You're still going to, there's still some core things you're going to teach your students. So, um, this is a poll I was going to provide. If you want to just, uh, you don't have to do the poll. I'm not going to worry about that right now. They want us to include polls in these sessions, and that's a great idea to keep you all more involved. But if you want to just, um, I'll give about a minute, and I'll give it a second, and we'll have a minute, we'll pipe up. See, uh, are you, how many of y'all will kind of want to know or going back to the classroom? Uh, and then how many people are uh, going to just do digital online, or how many doing a little bit of both? So uh, if you can, just, uh, if you click on the poll and do that, that's great. Maybe Twig can uh, give some information, response about that. Uh, Dr. Twig. Uh, um, but maybe he, no. Dr. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But maybe he can get back and give some information on that and let us know uh, which I think, you know, how many of you are going back to the classroom? I found, we found it last night, of course, it was drafted out, but it was official last night. We're going back August 10th for our students. You know, we're coming back, seizures start next week, but students come back on the 10th. Uh, what are y'all doing? Are y'all, some of y'all online, some of y'all, some of y'all may have students that they don't leave. Uh, and that happens. Uh, but, uh, it's an idea of what you are doing. Does anybody want to, I'm going to pause for a second and let y'all respond. Hey, uh, we do have somebody that said uh, one of their strategies is they incorporate ACT practice, creating ACT style questions uh, from the CJ standards of DC objectives. Yeah. That definitely benefits students. Uh, I'm sorry? Is finally where he belongs. Are we able to? No, the only thing I see is on the chat. Um, I see uh, somebody, Tabitha, mentioned that they're doing a hybrid model for school. Mm -hmm. And then on the polls, that, that was the only thing that posted up on my, on my screen for the polls was the ACT practice. But, you know, we've been having trouble all day. Oh. And uh, Lori mentioned back that uh, Lori Harris mentioned that they're going to go back on August 3rd. Oh, that's earlier than that. That's what was our, that was our original start date, but you know how things go. And uh, Shane, Shane Chapman said they go back uh, five days, uh, they go back for five days a week. And then uh, Ryan Sims said uh, they're having half class in the prison. Okay. Uh, odd numbers, computers come one day and even number computers come the other day. Okay. Um, a lot of online teaching computer lines. I can tell from just today's, I don't know if I would, you know, I've done a few online. I don't know how much I like that with this. But for setup now, not that it's just a learning process, I guess. You know, if I did this day in and day out, I'm sure I figured out within about a, a week if I had help. Uh, so there are different, you know, this is definitely a challenging year. Um, and some of you may have some students come back. Some may be, we're, all, we're offering a virtual online academy. And so I know I'm not going to see some students. Uh, so my classrooms, they may be smaller, they may be larger. I don't know. Uh, but definitely we're going to, it's going to be a different year, but it's still teaching and it's still going to be uh, hopefully our rigorous environments for our students. So um, on the, in the files, uh, you'll find this, but I put tiny URL because sometimes I know how technology works. And so the tiny URLs will link to those standards. Uh, you wanna, I don't know if you can copy and paste or just simply just write these down. 
the links I said out, you could not click on that link, it did not work. These are tiny URLs that will link you to those pages, to the standards, to where you can pr provide information or see other information other people are providing. Uh, and, and just uh, real quick, uh, one thing, uh, you can also take a screenshot of uh, using Zoom, or you know, if you're on a Mac or a PC, you know how to do that, just take a real quick screenshot of that, or you can take out your phone and just take a picture real quick, and then you can go back. Yes. And you should all have access to edit these, this information. Now, um, there's also, a, I have a CJ website. I graded a while back, has some info that I put out on it. If you want to add info, you can. You can click on and add info on any of those links on that website if you would like to. Um, but it has different lesson plans I put out there, videos, uh, things I do in my classroom. Doesn't have everything I do in my classroom. I just, a lot of times I just don't have time to put stuff out there on it, but uh, there are some different things I do. All right, so. Uh, I'm just going to go over some tips for helping students understand language for rigorous questioning. Uh, as we go and we build our lessons together, I think one thing is we really want to concentrate on is improving the language we use for our students and make sure they understand the vocabulary. Uh, you know, a lot of this, I just provide the polls at the end where I got a lot of this information, but you know, there's pre-teaching out there. Uh, what's your hook? How do you know? One thing about rigorous lessons is you gotta hook those students in there. What are you doing? For, what are some of the hooks you do? Uh, well, you know, there's a, is it four, three, two, one, where you show have four clues, three clues, two clues, one clue to get them to hook into your uh, lesson and maybe three, two, one, some variations of those. Are you using consistent vocabulary in your classroom? Um, and are you breaking down the vocabulary? It's like a term discretion. You know, uh, the derivative, you know, the discretion, it comes from the Latin term, what is it, discretio? I believe that's it, you know, are you breaking that down? You know, what does discretio mean? Um, what it means to, you know, to set apart, to break apart. And then you break down, well, what is the actual prefix, this mean? That means basically to set apart. And then I believe it's a stereo, if I'm incorrect, on the discretion part, you know, that means picking out the best. So you're breaking apart and picking out the best. That's the whole purpose of discretion and discretion. So uh, when you teach, you know, you're going over that term to those, and that terminology. Has anybody got any comments so far on that? Uh, no, I, I don't have any, anything on there yet. And uh, let me go check the polls real quick. Okay, that's fine. Um, yeah, I didn't see any more polls either, so nobody's yeah, putting in the we'll, chat. We'll keep moving on. Uh, we have those students that have the ability to cognitively grasp really quickly. You know, they're very, you know, their aptitude's high. They can get it quick. And we also have those students who struggle. And that's where we've focused on this a lot of times with the vocabulary. You have to help those students that struggle. You know, maybe they're just getting that vocabulary. Um, and that's rigor for them. You know, yeah, maybe rigor is for another part of the class. It's not rigor for the entire class. But for that kid, it may be rigor. Just getting that vocabulary, understanding that. And so that's one thing we got to consider, you know, the scaffolding, you know, how now the entire class you want to scaffold out. But for that student, you may be a little different. And so that's where it comes into challenge. People say, well, this kid doesn't can't get it. They don't get they're not gonna get rid of well. Rear is just about challenging that student and them getting that vocabulary, that understanding what that concept means. And that's fine for that student. Uh, but you do want to challenge the other ones. Uh, and so you want to build vocabulary for understanding. You also want to be, you know, sometimes on those tests they take, they may not understand the terminology. They may not understand the um, person has a right to counsel. Well, they don't have a right to counsel. They have a right to a lawyer. Some students will say, well, counsel is a lawyer. And they, you know, they need to understand those different types of terminology and different terms used for those. Um, of course, you always want to focus on wait time. That's one, one thing I've struggled in according to my observations. I make sure I get that good wait time. So when you're going to observe, make sure you know what the wait time is for your administrator and then what the appropriate wait time is used for your classroom. You know, give students time to think about it. Give feedback, give reflective feedback, let them know. Um, so, and of course, scaffolding, you know, view series questions, uh, we build upon each question. So start with the lower level questions and of course build up. That's obvious with scaffolding, in case I didn't mention that. Always, you know, review, comprehend review. Uh, Pre-teaching, you know, going back to that, you know, what type of formative assessment do you give like before class? Do you just do Kahoot, maybe see what they know? Thumbs up, thumbs down type thing. Just ask questions of the students. You can actually give a pre-test, but I actually have to take a test and turn it in. But um, of course, one thing for strategies is that always make that the learning environment as comfortable as possible. Make students feel comfortable. That's the one, that's the 
the key to having a rigorous classroom is make sure your students feel comfortable in your classroom because they're not afraid to raise their hand, uh, that they're not going to get some ne ne negative feedback, not just from the students, but from you as well. Make sure it's, you know, constantly being positive, reinforcing a positive atmosphere. Um, tips for helping students develop and answer rigorous questions. Um, model questions with structured responses is what it says here on Zoom. You know, sometimes you got to teach students how to think. You know, you can ask the questions. It can be a great question, but if they don't know how to think through the process, um, that's one thing I'm going to start this year, and I don't, hopefully it worked, but I definitely want to teach my students the different types of thinking first. We're not going to get into criminal justice first. We want to focus on our thinking process. We want to start off with critical thinking analytical thinking, what type of thinking are we going to, what different types of thinking styles we're going to use in the classroom, different type of learning styles we're going to have in the classroom. Make sure students understand what they're supposed to be learning, how they're supposed to be learning it. Uh, really focus in on those type strategies. Uh, a lot of times I just want to jump right into teaching criminal justice, but you know, sometimes I got to sit there and I got to break it apart. And that's, that's been my fault in the past and that's hopefully something I can improve on and improve the thinking process. Um, also, you want to determine the response you expect. Um, hopefully, you know, there's a certain response you want those students to have. How are they going to meet that response? Uh, if they don't get that response, what do you need to go back and um, fix? Help, you know, help the student expand on their, on their response. Well, why do you think that? I know your response is this, but tell me more about that. What, what's your, what do you continue? When do you want to build on to that? Why is that? Why do you think that? Well, what caused that? You know, you talk about the Miranda v. Arizona decision. You know, was this just something the Supreme Court just came up with, or were there's a history or a pattern in the past, dating back to several years, how uh, inmates or uh, suspects are treated in the interrogation room? So was there a reason for this? Is there something the district attorneys were not doing? Um, and of course, you may have to divide up peers in the class. One peer group may be more challenging than another peer group. Uh, that's the definition of rigor. Because uh, not all students, we, you know, not all students are on the same level. So you got to make sure you're providing different content that's appropriate to them. Of course, always provide the positive environment. That's always key. So we're going to look at building lessons. Uh, I had a different way I wanted to do this, but I don't think it's going to work out that way. So I'm just going to kind of go over things a little bit. I'm going to try and share my screen again. Uh, and hopefully it'll work. Hopefully it'll build more toward building a better lesson. So, um, you know, first we want to decide on what standard we're going to teach. And we want to unwrap that standard. Uh, what does the standard desire uh, you to convey to students? Um, what are the big ideas? What are the essential questions? You know, and then it goes on to what students, not just the standard. What are the things do you want your students to know? Um, I had one time had an administrator years ago who said, it's not your job to teach responsibility to these students. It's not your standards. Well, I think we disagree. I, several administrators I've had since, you know, they, they disagree with that, you know. You want to help students build responsibility. You want to make sure that they're going to be productive. You know, this, you know, a lot of our students aren't going to go into criminal justice, but they still need to know responsibility, things in the career they need to do. You know, they need to know their soft skills, you know, those hard, or how are they going to be more professional, uh, what type of, even whatever type of career they go into. I think we you create your end unit, what's, you know, what's the end in mind? You know, beginning with the end in mind, what's that end unit supposed to be? What do you want? What's the assessment product? Um, and then you reassess with kind of gauge that, you know, whatever you can. Uh, is there a question or a comment? Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't see any uh, questions on there right now. Nobody's uh, put anything down. Okay. Uh, and then you want to make sure you know your key vocabulary terms, connections, other subject areas, core areas. You know, you always want to link to your core areas, mainly because that makes your administrators happy, but also, uh, it's good for the students to understand, hey, you know, this is, I need to know history. I need to know math. I need to uh, go back to bullet trajectory. You know, I need to know uh, tangents. How does that apply in bullet trajectory or a bloodstain pattern analysis? So you want to always uh, definitely link those and then plan authentic performance tests. You know, that's the, the, the heart of your lesson. How, how's it authentic to them? What's it creating? And we're going to go over this a little bit more in detail, or at least you're going to be able to do that. I'm going to provide that out for you. Uh, hopefully, if you want to give some feedback and develop a rubric uh, and a similar model of what is expected. You want to make sure your students have a rubric of what's expected. I know in that video earlier, you know, don't expect your students to turn in great work if you're not going to tell them what great work is. Um, 
your students need to know what you expect of them ahead of time. Um, I think you, I think this it goes back, if you're getting observed, you want to know what your principals expect of you in the classroom. I think that's a fair assessment. I think that's a fair assessment for students. We need, they need to know what we expect of them. Of course, you want to gather your instructional resources um, and then make adjustments for IEPs, you know, learners, whatever you need to in those. So let's uh, look at focusing on a, we'll do that toward the end. Let's go ahead and let me see if I can share this with you. I believe I have the link. Well, uh, since we're in CJ2, I'm open in CJ2. Can you see what I see? The Criminal Justice 2 Standard 1 Rigorous Lesson? I don't want to take a tour. Um, what I'm looking at is the questions or comments. Okay, let me stop sharing. I'm going to have to reshare. Okay? Yeah, now we see you. Okay, hey. Let me see here. Where is it at? Here we go. And share. I just and it, it says, uh, yeah, so it's a, it's a, a doc form. Yes, it is. A, this was a live doc. You all have a link to it. Uh, it's accessed in there. I can't remember exactly which one. Everybody uh, did. Um, er, There's a couple people that have posted to please upload the presentation when you can because they're having some, some issues with that, but I think you knew that earlier. Yeah, I did. I put it on the chat. If you can look on the chat, it's the biggest URL there. Okay. Um, I will put these on PDF and add them later. Uh, but um, it, it says that uh, it will, when they click on it, it says it will not allow people to download them. Okay, well, I'll just download as a PDF uh, here in a little bit, and then it will hopefully pop back up so they can view it. Okay. <laughs> uh, but uh, first thing we want to look at is criminal justice. I just did standard one here if we're going to break it down. And I did not invent this, so I don't think, uh, wow, this is great invention. This I copied from uh, the Al Board United Unified School District out of Corona, California. No uh, implied our puns with what's going on now in Corona, California, but uh, this is something uh, they've had out for years. It's actually been several years they put this out. So we determine the standard and then unwrap the standard. Uh, so what do we want? on that first lesson. Well, list the information students need to know. Okay, so we got the career profile, law enforcement, probation, security, that's what they want to focus on. So they need a job description, extension knowledge, skills. Uh, identify what students are to do. Well, they're going to prepare a career profile. That's basically what they're going to do. Um, what you want to do is uh, your focus areas, course careers in criminal justice, concepts, students need to understand the requirements, skills and needed for careers. And that's you know, this is just, you know, being a career class, you want them to learn, this is what's going to be required. You really want them to understand what their salary is going to be. Uh, you, that's one thing you definitely want to see, is what is their salary? Uh, what's it going to be? What's it going to be like? Uh, focus for skills responsibility, you can put that down organization. And this is something to build on. Essential questions. So these are just units if you want to look at. They'll be available. I'm going to put out there. Um, and then what I want to do is I want to, let me see here. Here we go. This is criminal justice and this is CJ1. Let's go to CJ1, Sharon. Can y'all see this? It says criminal justice system, explore the history. Michael, can you see that? Or do I need to reshare? Let me click on. Okay. Well, let me do something, Belinda. Sorry. Let's see if I can find you anywhere. It'd be nice to give an apple and a quarter. Very comments on this. Can y'all see criminal justice? Michael, can you see? Yeah, it says uh, criminal justice on the left hand side is blue with the law enforcement yeah. communication. Yeah. If we, if y'all can, if y'all can link onto this, uh, providing the links, uh, it's the tiny URL one, the first one. If you can click on there, you can add stuff to it. Click share, it should be shared. Um, and you, you have any lessons or information you would like to provide that you give the students, you can go in there and click different things you do, like explore the history. Um, you know, for example, explore history on this one, I'm gonna click down. We do paper slides as a product. 
I allow them to do paper slides of the product or they have can do a digital line, paper slides. If you don't know what paper slides are, you know, we can always add stuff later to that. Uh, if anybody's done paper slides before. Uh, but just different things. Um, students outline and it's basically like a PowerPoint presentation, but they have the paper down and they video record and they have to talk and give information about that timeline. Let me see if I can scroll down and try and move this so I can see. Is anyone able to get into this? I got into one, but I can't get into this one. Okay, let me see here. Sure. Well, let me. It's my fault. I. So if you. Hopefully, if you get on it again, it'll let you in. Should be shared. You do the tiny URL. Let me go back to that PowerPoint. So here are the links, tiny URL uh, forward slash, or slash TNCJ1 something. And then there's TJ in there. So, all right, I got someone in. So, if there's anything you can you want to provide, other people do uh, in their standards. Are you do you doing your standards for other people? You can click on that. This is a, a more of a, I created this uh, criminal justice one. This is the, in our last one's criminal justice, see this criminal justice one standard one rigor lesson guide. Uh, this is a little bit more detailed, talking about the different things um, you can do. And what I wanna do is open up to any questions, ideas, comments in this last few minutes, just for y'all um, about how you incorporate rigor. Um, in your classroom, anything y'all do uh, that you think you would like to share, and of course, you know competitions. You know if you do uh, a competition where they have DUI, that's a, a great way on uh, the CJ two one. I'm talking about DUI. You know, students are actually out there going and performing DUI in your class. Could you say that one more time? Well, like on the, in criminal justice too, you know, you have the DUI standard or alcohol and beverage law standard, you know, do you teach the students how to do uh, conduct a field sobriety test? You know, that's, you know, that's a great point of rigor, you know, getting out there and actually having to conduct that, learning the steps in their head. My, my students love that one. Yeah. That, that's one of their favorites. Any, any kind of hands-on, you know, traffic stops, anything like that, they're, they're so excited about. And that's one thing is, uh, I noticed, if you notice the quote at the beginning of the thing, I think that's one of the best things about our program is things we can do hands-on. Uh, it's, it's from Benjamin Frank, you know, you can tell someone what to do, you can teach them, but if you show them how to do it, if you're out there, you're doing hands-on work, they're going to learn a lot more than they ever will just sitting in the classroom. Listen that's, to I agree. Uh, and, that's, uh, and that's one thing I wanted to kind of get there. You know, if you have an idea of what you do for students, that's more hands-on in your class. Some of these are, I'll be honest, are a little bit more difficult to do hands-on. Um, but if there are some hands-on different activities you do with these students in these different areas, maybe you can provide those, let other people know. That way they can start incorporating their classroom. And we build the criminal justice program a little bit more for throughout the state. Yeah, my, my fear, especially with the online platform, you know, I feel like we're going to miss out so much on that. Yeah, um, that's going to be that's going to be challenging for students that are just doing the, or for those doing online. You know, um, the connection that you get in the classroom is a lot different than the connection you're going to get online. It's, they're going to be, have so many distractions there. Um, yeah, 
I like to say 100% of people are, of this are paying attention right now, but I know that's not true. I mean, you know, the reality <laughs> is people are elsewhere. Uh, they may be online, but I'm at. they're not really here. Yeah, I'm still trying to pull up some of these documents. <laughs> yeah, and I'll, I'll go back and I'll add them. Um, and if you want to, at the end of this document, if you just want to put down here, I'll put a place on any of these documents for just email. I can send you everything I have. If you just want to add your email. Oh, that would be awesome. Just, and I can send you anything I have on this. Uh, other different things I have. That way, a lot of the information will be shared out, different things you do, different thing, questioning. I do videotape my classroom. I'm the lead mentor for my school, so sometimes I videotape my classroom and have my new teachers. Uh, they have to observe me and do the team rubric um, and point out my weaknesses. And they're, they, they do a good job of that. I, you know, I have to admit that. But, you know, that's always a way to improve yourselves. Uh, if you're not willing to throw yourself out there, uh, you're not going to get, get any better. If you're not willing to take the chance, um, to realize your mistakes and that's, I don't like seeing myself on camera, but I don't mind them seeing me on camera and writing down, you know, things I need to prove on. And there's a, there are several things. Um, so if there's, can, we, can we put our email in the chat section? Will that help there? Especially? Yeah, I think I can still access it. I'll copy and paste that. I'll have Michael, if he can copy and paste it. Yeah. Yeah. You can, you should be able to cut and paste it in there, but, um, yeah, and then Paisley can go back and grab that out. Yeah. I think it saves everything in there. Um, I know one thing, are, are a lot of y'all using Teams or Zoom when you're teaching? Do y'all know? We're going to Teams. Teams. I think there's, Teams is a little different. Uh, I haven't used Teams. We do go, we're supposed to use Teams. Uh, through Lipscomb University, I've become more familiar with Zoom. Uh, you know, there's great things about it, and then there always there's going to be negative things about it as well. Um, so you just you got to just go with what you have. Um, but uh, you'll get. I mean, I think it's one of those things. Is the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. Teaching online, talking online. I agree. Having you know. But I hope it's not. I hope it's not going to be the norm. Um, I definitely uh, rather see students in the classroom. Um, I just it's don't know gonna, if I enjoy teaching as much. It's going to be a challenge. Yeah, it is. Um, so, is there any comments or anything I want to uh, throw out there? Uh, yeah, I don't see anything anybody's posted. Okay. We're probably definitely waiting on that word. I wish I knew what it was. I really, I really wish I knew what it was. Uh, I'm just kidding. It's, uh, the word is uh, smile. I'll go and throw that out there. It's smile, like S-M-I-L-E, smile. I think that's another oxymoron they gave me. <laughs> You're getting a smile. Yeah, I just I just tried to post it in there and my whole screen locked up. So it's because you posted it early. That's why they, you know, Big Brother's watching. Oh yeah, I got you. I got you. So you, you can't do that. I was trying to be helpful, man. I know. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. Uh, I honestly, it's, it's very challenging. But you know, hopefully, maybe you gain at least one thing out of it. If not, at least hopefully you're getting paid for this. <laughs> I appreciate you taking your time out to do this. I mean, it really is. I've, I've been teaching about four years, and this is still going to help me tremendously. Yeah. Um, I'll be honest, a lot of times, I'll, I'll, what helps me is sometimes I just go back and look at uh, some YouTube videos of what other teachers do, uh, try to, you know, talk to other teachers, observe what they do. Uh, it's very difficult. I know each, it's rare that you have more than one criminal justice teacher in your school. Um, some of you don't even have one more criminal justice from just teaching your district. And so it's very challenging a lot of times when you're by yourself teaching, and you know, you're the only one teaching what you exactly teach in the classroom. So it can be challenging when you don't have that uh, networking or that communication with others. And that's one thing we uh, definitely want to build on is if we can help each other out with teaching. And I know in our building, there's 
some departments work really well together in teaching certain subject areas because they're because the, they're there they have you know four or five teachers in one department all teaching the same subject let me see if i can go in let me it's still giving me weird things let me see here All right, there we go. Let me see if I can go to chat. It froze. So I'm going to go through and I am going to Well, didn't let me To fix some that up. Okay. Okay. Let me start. I'll send those uh, PDFs. I'll put them back on the thing. And if you just want to provide me your email, I can send them to you directly. Um, anything. I will also, see if you if you ever need any help with PowerPoints or different things like that, lesson plans, just uh, send me. I put my email out there for people to see. So I'm going to see. I'm not sure if it's showing up in the chat. Yeah, yeah. Yours posted twice, but the one that I posted didn't show up. Okay. So it's my email. I think it's posted in the chat. Uh, I'll get those. Uh, I'll send a link out. Uh, if you need to get in contact with me or anything or any other teachers, you know, feel free to. Uh, I guess we'll end early. Hopefully they won't fire me. Yeah. <laughs> they might. Uh, we'll see. I don't think so, buddy. I don't think so. All right, Jeremy. Well, I wish I could have helped you out better, man. I, I didn't get anything till late well, last yeah, night. I know. You know the hell that, that goes. You know, it's nothing like the last minute. Uh, I like flying by the seat of my pants. But, you know, it's what you do. Hey, you do have an attendee raising their hand. I can't, oh. I can't tell. Uh, Brandon Eldridge. Brandon okay, let me Eldridge. see if I can pull him up. It's, some of these aren't showing up. I don't know. I don't know if he just did it or not. I'm just seeing it. Okay, I'm trying to find him. Wait a minute. Brandon Eldridge, yes. Okay, Brandon, I think you can talk now if you want to. I don't Hey, I had um, just a suggestion of one thing that I do. Uh -huh. um, and that's with the uh, we were talking about the alcohol and DUI section you know yes. doing the field sobriety test but also one of the things that I do is I do a PSA for uh, drunk driving and I actually send it out to all of the local law enforcement agencies around here and they I, they absolutely love them and they show them in their um, like the uh, traffic school situations yeah that's a great point you know uh we do we did one on school shootings here and kids love videotaping and doing stuff like that. Uh, anytime you know you with public service, I'm assuming you do a video and send it out. Maybe I'm correct, but you know, you create things like that and students love seeing themselves on camera. Some don't, but some do. It's and you know, the ones that don't think can be behind the camera is creating a lot of work and those who are actually talking in front of the camera. Um, you see a lot of talented students. Some I had one student years ago, she's kind of quiet, but when he got on the video camera, she was a great announcer, you know, it's like she was the weather person on those local stations. Uh, and so, yeah, I'd like incorporating videos, uh, them making videos, have a camera, have a 360 camera that they can do stuff with. That's mainly for crime scene, but they can do other things with it as well. And that's, yeah, that's one of the great things about, uh, you know, creating videos. And you can actually do some of that. Maybe they can create different videos uh, going back to the digital uh, component. And that has a lot of rare because there's a lot of thinking and process involved in doing a video and doing some type of public service announcement like that. Um, they, if, there is, if it's a video of them, they don't want to typically fly, you know, just make something simple. They want to make it more concrete, like that boy in that video did. You know, there's a purpose behind it. And that's one thing these kids definitely want to see as a purpose behind their projects and what they do. I got another raised hand. Let me see if I can find it. I think, is that Loretta? I think you can speak. Was that you? It's Kay. 
Hey there, Jeremy. Um, I'm curious about what the status of your fall competition is. Um, Right now, you know, I was was working with MTSU Mm -hmm. on doing the competition there. Uh, We planned it out. I don't know if MTSU, I don't know if anybody's heard what MTSU is doing right now. I don't know if they're going back or not. I'll be honest with you. With a lot of the unrest going on, I don't know if I want to be on a college campus. No, I, I agree with you on that. I don't, I just because, um, you know, I was when I was in college, I thought I was smart, and then I got a job, and I realized I wasn't. Um, so, you know, I, you know, I'm going to may talk to, uh, may look at doing it at a different location. I, I don't know Northfield; they just it's in the process of being sold. I don't know if that's yeah. even available anymore. So we're probably going to do it either church here. We talked about maybe doing a church in Oklahoma. Uh, I don't know how that's a drive for people in Murfreesboro and Gallatin. Uh, I'd like to do, I'd like to do it at MTSU, but you know, I just don't want to take any chances. Uh, and I don't even know if they're even going to be in. I don't have heard they're going to be in school this session. They're going back to. They're not going back till Thanksgiving break. I don't know what middle's doing either. But at this point, you plan to do it. It's all tentative, and mm-hmm. there are questions just like us going back to school questions. Yeah, and uh, you know, it may be something that you gotta wait till January, February. Uh, It may end up like that because you go late into December, you start running into those on block scheduling testing, Mm -hmm. uh, traditional block. So, um, you know, I don't know right now. Uh, I talked with over my administration, my CT director, and see what's the best option um, for that. I like to do it the regular time in November. If we do, it's probably going to be at a, a church here in Columbia or somewhere in the area. Uh, maybe Northfield. I haven't talked to them lately. They're still working on the process of acquiring the building, a new Spring Hill, acquiring the building, City of Spring Hill, and see if they're going to even open it up at that point. And also remember that uh, Rutherford County now has the mask mandate. Mm-hmm. We just never know how long those things will last, how long they'll keep extending. Yeah, um, so I'm thinking, you know, maybe it may be the 2020 will actually be, 2020 competition will actually be in 2021. When uh, will <laughs> uh, That's just, you, you just play it you right now. Probably I have a decision and we'll have a good idea by mid-September because it'd be too late to, for people to start planning in October or mid-October because fall break, with so many people still happening. Uh, if I don't, you know, definitely make a decision by September 15th. Okay. Let me know if I can help you. I'll be right. glad to do if I can. Mm-hmm. Any more questions? I think our, we got one minute and, and hopefully this was somewhat beneficial to you. Um, hopefully you gained some, hopefully you can at least make some connections with others out there. Um, I wish you the best. Uh, for your upcoming school year, wherever that may be. Um, and always reach out to me or anyone else uh, that you can think of. Just reach out, contact me if you need anything. If you need help with uh, digital stuff, uh, I can point you somewhere. I don't know if I can actually help you uh, from observation of today. But, uh, you know, I wish all of you the best in your future. And hopefully, you know, you're excited as I am to see the students again. Uh, if you're not excited, then, well, I'm sorry. Uh, you're not excited. You're probably in the wrong business. Yeah, you probably need that. Yeah. Um, but anyway, wish the best of luck to you. Um, I was asked to plug this in. I don't know if I did because a friend of mine did apply. No one was looking for a criminal justice teacher at this time. Um, I know he's done a few interviews, but they are Nolensville High School in Williams County is looking for a criminal justice position. So, um, so if you uh, know of anyone or know of anybody who may be interested. All right, uh, I hope you have a good school year and best of luck to you all. You take right. care. Thanks, man. Let me know if you need anything from me, all right? Thank you.
Hello? Yeah, I called to make sure. Yeah, uh -huh, I know. Uh, make sure you have your money on tomorrow. Make sure you have your money, your money tomorrow. Thank you. 